They're known as the little insects that we couldn't live without. And more and more of us are beginning to realise just how important bees are and they're the focus of a competition being set by our colleagues over at bbc radio 2 and the zoe ball breakfast show it's a fun and creative way of course to learn more about bees and other insects that help provide much of the food we eat and quite frankly are essential for a very healthy environment so what can we do locally what can we do here in norfolk and if no matter what size garden we've got whether we've got a tiny one we've got a window box where we've got big lawn are there things that we can do in our own back gardens to attract bees there? And if everybody did that, then can you imagine how good it would be? Let's speak to Dan Harris, who's the founder of Bee Saviour Behaviour. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Ed. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on, on BBC Radio Norfolk. And um, I'm scared of most things, but strangely, bees don't bother me. And finally, that, that has paid off because finally people are agreeing that, yes, bees bees do need our help. Um, why do they need their help? What, what sort of situation are bees? Lots of different species, but what sort of situation are they in then, Dan? Well, the challenge, the challenge for our UK bees is we've got like 270, roughly 270 species of bees over here, and um, 35 of them are threatened with extinction. And it's all to do with, I guess, the impact that us humans have on, on the landscape, I guess. So like building stuff, I guess our farmland is all like one big crop that only flowers for a very short period. And I guess the introduction of chemicals into the, into the landscape, all of these things really aren't helping the bees out much. Um, so yeah, so... Um, Yes, have 35 threatened with extinction is yeah, all a bit scary. <laughs> it is a bit scary, isn't it? Because they are they are such an important part. I mean, without bees, I know other insects pollinate, but largely without bees, you know, we're, we're kind of screwed, aren't we? Really? Absolutely. So yeah, like three quarters of our crops that rely on some kind of animal pollination. Um, yeah, and actually, like it's also for us, for us at Bee Safe Behaviour, what we really um, what really excites us about bees is um, bees are one of the bits of urban wildlife that that we'll all see in our own garden. Mm. So actually, these really offer a connection to urban wildlife in our own spaces as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about then um, the, the group that you founded, Bee Saviour Behaviour. Obviously, you're big fans of mm. bees. Um, that's obvious. But, um. but, <laughs> but, 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 but what do you do? What, what, what is it all about at Bee Saviour Behaviour? Well, we, we want to inspire a whole community of bee saviour citizens, basically. So we do community education stuff. We do campaigns. We produce innovative products to try and get people to um, take simple steps to do things to tackle bee population decline. Um, it's been a funny year, I'll be honest, because um, actually, you know, community education has begun, been a big part of it. So like getting out into communities and just meeting people and, and, and showing them techniques. But obviously that hasn't been possible over the last year. So we've been diverting our, our kind of focus to um, citizen science stuff and, um, and yeah, all sorts of other kind of campaign -y sort of stuff, um, more online sort of stuff. But yeah. At the end of the day, there's loads of really simple things that anyone can do, some of which actually require you to do less things rather than more things that will actually help the bees in your own garden. So there's loads of stuff that, that we can educate people with. Brilliant. Well, let's come and share it with us here in Norfolk then, Dan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's start with the things that we need to do less and more of so we can put our feet up. I think, I think quite frankly, I'm a bit lazy. That's what I want to hear. First <laughs> of the things I don't need to keep doing, Dan. Um, yeah, to help to help our fellow bees. Well, so I guess the, the three key ones are, so I guess like not mowing as much of your lawn. So bees love a bit of long grass basically to shelter in. So that's a really simple one, actually. So don't mow quite as much as your law, of your lawn as you normally would. Um, leaving those dandelions, so particularly in spring, leaving those dandelions in your lawn, because actually um, particularly bumblebees, when they emerge from their winter hibernation, they're looking for their first feed. And actually those dandelions are a great one for that. So actually, yeah, not, not removing those from your lawn is a good one. And actually, I guess leaving chemicals on the shelf um, is also a good one. Yeah, actually, um, keeping those out of your garden. Um, a lot of insecticides actually have some sort of impact on bee populations too. So, um, so yeah, they're the easy, they're the easy ones in terms of like do less. <laughs> yeah, great. I love the fact any excuse, any ex and now I've got you on tape. So any excuse to not cut my lawn is is brilliant. I tell you what, I am. I mean, I don't want to be. I'm being too goody two shoes now, but there is a part of my my garden that I I always it never grows well as grass anyway. And I just think, well, if I leave it long, it's, it might attract a few more insects. It might look a bit mm. a bit bit rough around the edges. Who cares? I think I think that's all right. So that's good. That's the stuff we don't need to be doing. Um, what are some of the things that we can be doing? Whether you've got just maybe a window box or you've got a nice big garden what are some of the things that we can do we can all do to attract more bees to our gardens then yeah i mean i think this is where the big the big bee challenge is great actually because um there's loads of things you can plant in your garden so i guess yeah thinking about your garden design is great 
Like the, the internet is full of information about mm. bee friendly plants, the, you know, the sort of plants that bees are going to love. Um, so, so yeah, I guess you can get out there, get into the garden centers and find some really great plants that you love. And also the bees will love, um, also, I guess putting some sort of water water feature in your garden. Actually, bees like lots of um, lots of wild animals need places where they can get some water. Um, and actually, our big thing for this coming year is bee hotels. Um, solitary bees make up kind of most of the bees that are in the UK. And actually, bee hotels are great when they're a good bee hotel. They're a great way of introducing a habitat into your garden. That actually, if you kind of keep an eye on it, you'll see leaf cutter bees and mason bees building their nests in those bee hotels. Mm. And actually, leafcutter bees are fascinating bees to watch because they'll be flying through the air with bits of leaf underneath them being carried in to build their nests. So um, so there's some good, yeah, good simple things, you know, that aren't too complicated that you can do to, to, to encourage them to. It's pretty magical, isn't it? And I can imagine you get the kids involved, the grandchildren involved. Um, and talking about solitary bees, because it is going to be, is it next week we've got solitary bee week? And I think a lot of us imagine it bees, is. they're all in colonies, you know, they're all working together, but there's plenty, as you say, that are solitary bees and what they're up to. Absolutely, yeah. So there are over 200 different species of solitary bee in the UK. So masses, actually. Um, and some of them are just extraordinary bees that live extraordinary lives. And yeah, bee hotels will support some of those. Um, but yeah, next week is Solitary Bee Week. We've got loads of big announcements happening on Monday, um, which we're, we're involved with some stuff with the Royal Society with their summer mm -hmm. exhibition in London. Um, and also Earlham Institute, which is a local organisation in Norwich that's actually a real pioneer of, of bee science. Um, so we've got some exciting things going on it's going to launch on Monday around Solitary Bee Week. Um, so, yeah, so keep an, keep an ear to the ground on those things. But, um, yeah, Solitary Bees are actually, in terms of people who have phobias of bees or are kind of scared of bees, they're really, really shy little bees. They very rarely sting. Some of them don't even have a sting. Um, and actually, they're just beautiful. Some of them are, are really extraordinary bees, like the pantaloon bee, which has really crazy yellow flared <laughs> kind of trouser legs and, and all sorts of there's all sorts of interesting bees that <laughs> i've never heard of the pantaloon bee but i love it all <laughs> i love the sound of it already and this is the thing isn't it it's getting your head around you know we think there's sort of bees honeybees and bumblebees and that's about it but actually look a bit closer you've got so many going on um i know for many summers now i've had um got bird boxes in the garden and some of them are being taken over i think by canadian tree bees possibly mm, um, yeah and and, <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing the the noise that you get out of those boxes. I get a bit nervous. I'm sort of well, I won't need to mow the lawn now, will I? Because it protects the bees. But when I've been mowing the lawn near them, I'm thinking, oh my word, are they going to get angry about my lawn mower going past? Thinking it's a massive bee. Um, but again, you know, bees. If you sort of leave them alone, that they're, they're okay, aren't they? They're not going to get too aggressive with you, are they? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think often bees are kind of misidentified. So I think like often. If there's if there's an insect being a bit territorial in your garden, it's probably a it's probably a hoverfly. Hoverflies are quite territorial, and actually they they deliberately mimic bees in how they look. So it's really easy to to misidentify um, mis misidentify one. And actually, they don't sting, so they kind of pretend to be a bee. So it looks like they might have a sting, but they're not. Um, and they're really territorial, especially when they're mating. Um, so I think often, um, yeah, the things that we get scared of aren't actually bees anyway. Um, and actually bees, yeah, I mean, they're on a mission, basically. They've got to go around. They've got to visit all these flowers. You know, yeah. they're very business-like, really. Um, you know, they don't want to They don't want to get distracted. <laughs> Too right. Leave them alone. Let them get on. Um, Dan, are you okay <laughs> to stay with us? Because I, I want to, we can talk a little bit more about some of the other things we can do in the garden uh, to attract mm. them. Um, and I also wonder whether, um, can we start to talk a little bit? I mean, I know it's that like you could do a whole show on, on that. So, But but beekeeping, <laughs> if people want to get want to start thinking about keeping bees as well, can we, are you all right to talk about that, Dan. Yeah, we have a go, can't we? Yeah, why not? That's <laughs> yeah. the spirit. Good stuff. This is Dan Harris then from Bee Saviour Behaviour. And uh, we're talking about bees. You may have heard our colleagues at Radio 2 doing a competition uh, about designing a bee-friendly garden. This is how this is how you can get involved with, with attracting them to your own gardens. And the best news from Dan this morning is that let's just stop cutting our grass. We're kind of starting to learn, um, you know, people who aren't into bees, we're starting to learn that how important bees are. So many different species. Uh, I'm trying to grow some plants in the garden at the moment to attract them. Dan has already said, well, you need to get building a, a bee hotel. Don't cut the lawn so much because they love to sort of hide in there and keep down in, in the long grass and things. But there's still plenty more that we can do. My only issue, Dan, is as much as I love bees, I cannot stand the taste of honey. I don't know why. I know I, I, 
I, I, I, the people eat it, and I'm thinking, oh, that looks really delicious. And then, uh, anyway, apart from that, it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, what sort of plants can we put in the garden? Do you think, Dan? What, what, what sort of plants would would attract various bees to our gardens? Oh my goodness! Wow. So, so this is why I always rely on my colleagues, really, because I'm <laughs> not really a great gardener. Um, we've got so there's some great lists out there of um, so Dave Goulson and um, Rosie Rollins did a great piece of research where they came up with like a list of six the six favourite plants for um, some of the most common bees um, in the UK. Um, and so, I mean, we've got a hebe in our back garden, and the, the bees absolutely love it. Um, like buddleias, and actually, trees are often overlooked as as mm. um, People don't think of them as being great for great for um great for bees like so we've seen horse chestnuts that are just absolute you know i guess like all you can eat buffets for bees because there's so many <laughs> so many flowers on them it's incredible um but yeah i think like simple roses so yeah um, flowers that aren't too complicated um they love yeah i guess they love purple flowers there's certain colors they really they're, they seem to be much more drawn to um but I mean, I think this is one place where I mean, I can see that um, BBC Radio Two with their big bee challenges as mm. working with uh, the RHS. You know, there's so much information. That's one place where um, there's just been a real explosion of information. Yeah. Is you know what plants and you know what you know what to get in your garden basically. What are the, what are the good good selections? And actually, often often it's plants that will grow really happily. They're not things that are difficult to grow. Um, you know, things that potentially will take over your garden and <laughs> give you a bee paradise. <laughs> no, it's really nice. And and the other thing I put 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 you on the spot with um was i was just thinking if you want to go a step further and you're interested in maybe keeping bees uh i wonder mm. where, where where you start with something like that and and is it is it easy or is it really for for, the, for those who who've got the time uh, and can really throw themselves in it i wonder where you start with keeping bees dan probably the best place to start is to find someone who um within your networks so you can actually go and experience a beehive i guess um because they're quite unique so i mean you mentioned the tree bumblebees in a in a nest box so they will like a bumblebee will have a colony of uh, in the tens so maybe 40 or 50 bees in a colony but a, a honeybee will have tens of thousands in a colony so um so we're talking a kind of another level in terms of in terms of the number of bees um but actually you know um spending time with a with a a colony of bees in a beehive is is you know for some people you know really extraordinary and quite uplifting and and exhilarating um so yeah i mean i think the first thing even if you even if you take the steps to to start setting up your own hive it's really important to have a mentor and to maybe to go on a local beekeeping course um but probably yeah probably the first step is to actually just see if you can find someone who's got a hive and um, they'll probably have a spare bee suit and yeah just just go down there and ask them if they yeah. can uh, show you around <laughs> so you get a sense of it um because it's not a massive commitment i guess you need a bit of space um you need to check on your hive you know weekly mm. but um but yeah it's um but yeah you're certainly responsible for a, a whole lot of insects <laughs> you are yeah well i know exactly but maybe some people want to go and do that i mean dan harris you're the founder of be save your behavior i think the message is beginning to get through with people but uh, but as we prepare to say goodbye to you today i mean what what do you want to leave people with just a reminder um that we all could do a bit more for for bees in this in this country well so you know what the, the thing for me is and the thing that got, kind of got me into bees was actually just um observing them and actually starting to realize how extraordinary they are because i think they're so small and they buzz past us and they go on um so actually, um, I'd invite people this weekend to just kind of spend some time observing the bees in their garden, I guess, and starting to kind of notice what's around. Because actually, there's such a broad range of, of different species and, and some of them, you know, quite beautiful and quite extraordinary. Um, and actually, yeah, they're one, the one piece of urban wildlife that should be in probably every garden in, in the country across, you know, all the 15 million gardens in the UK. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think developing a love for something comes before probably fighting for it. So if we can all kind of observe a bee and fall in love with it, then we'll probably all be a bit more ready to fight for them, won't we? Exactly. Good message. Dan, thank you so much. I'll let you get back to, to saving the bees. Um, and uh, thanks ever so much <laughs> for joining us on BBC Radio Norfolk.